Welcome to the Pharmacist Voice Podcast, episode 213. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. I have a 20-year-old son with autism named Craig who cannot read, write, or speak. In 2005, he was diagnosed with autism. His diagnosis changed my life. In this episode, I'll be talking about autism. Starting last year, that was 2022, I publish an episode about autism each April because April is Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month. Without autism, the Pharmacist Voice podcast would not exist. Neither would my business, the Pharmacist Voice LLC. This episode will give you an opportunity to get to know me better as a person, understand how my company started, and maybe inspire you to turn pain into purpose, too. Yes, I said pain into purpose. More on that in just a minute. If you are completely new to this podcast, thanks for stopping by. This is not my usual type of episode, but I will tell you a little bit about me. I am a pharmacist by training, but I'm not in clinical practice anymore. I made a career transition to voice actor and podcast host. Think of me as a medical narrator and a podcast host. What kind of work do I do? Among other things, I narrate audiobooks for women pharmacist authors, provide medical narration to clients in the pharmaceutical, biotech, and continuing medical education industries, and I narrate content for explainer videos and e-learning projects. I was inspired by my nonverbal son, who has autism, to combine my background as a pharmacist with my speaking voice and launch my business, The Pharmacist Voice, in 2017. My son Craig helped me realize the power of having a voice and using it. My solo podcast episodes are about some aspect of being a pharmacist, a voice actor, a pharmacist podcaster, or my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. My interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain so that you, my listener, are inspired to use your voice too. This is episode 213, and you can find the show notes on my website, thepharmacistvoice.com. Just click on the podcast tab and search for episode 213. You just heard about why I do what I do. My son Craig inspired me to use my voice, and he inspired my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor and podcast host. In a way, I turned pain into purpose. Here are four general examples of people who turned their pain into purpose. I won't name names. Then I'll explain more about my twist on the theme of pain into purpose. Let's do this. Example number one. A mom runs a marathon while pushing her son's wheelchair. I think you've probably heard about such things on the news. She runs because she appreciates her own ability to run, of course, but she also runs to raise awareness about her son's disability. Example two. A young woman becomes a sign language interpreter because she's a coda, a child of a deaf adult. Coda. She recognizes her deaf father's struggle to communicate. She learns sign language and then she later monetizes that second language as an interpreter. Example three A middle aged man recovers from heroin addiction and opens a series of recovery facilities so he can help others overcome their addiction to opioids too. And finally, example number four. A woman whose child has a developmental disability becomes a special education teacher for elementary school children. She gives young children a good start in the educational system, the school system, and she also mentors parents who are confused by the complicated world of individualized education plans, tutors, summer school, and so much more. These stories are not uncommon. I used the theme of turning pain into purpose, and then I added my own flavor to it. Out of those four examples, the CODA example really resonates with me. It's really similar to what I've done, don't you think? When a deaf man struggles to hear in a hearing world, 
and his daughter sees that, she can use his weakness as her strength. My son struggles to speak in a world in which almost everyone speaks. His weakness is my strength. I can talk. From my son Craig, I have learned the power of having a voice and using it. You may be thinking, but Kim, why did you leave clinical pharmacy practice? Lots of people have children with autism, and they still work. Yeah, that's a good question. I see where you're coming from. Listen, I didn't want to leave, but my back was literally against the wall when it came to child care. It's not that I'm picky about child care. I love my son, and I do care about who I choose to watch him. But he needs something called skilled care. People with aging parents will probably identify with this more than people who have young children who are in some sort of a child care facility. My son needs a lot of help. Every child with autism is different, and I need to protect his privacy, so I won't go into the details here. But just trust me that you can't just hire a teenager in my neighborhood to watch my son. We have tried it with disastrous results. When did we realize that we had a big child care issue? Great question. By the time Craig was about 13 years old, that was in 2016, we realized that we had a big child care problem. Skilled care is incredibly difficult to find for our son Craig. There is a nationwide shortage of caregivers, a nationwide caregiver shortage, and there has been for years, and my family is definitely affected by it. If you're thinking that I could just work nights and weekends, problem solved. You'd be right. I could. But I chose not to miss out on sleep, family time, and shared experiences like my son's activities, my other son, Derek, just so I could work. I chose not to miss out on sleep, family time, and my other son's activities just so I could work. Money isn't everything. I'm almost 45 years old. I know my voice sounds young, but I am almost 45. Sacrificing sleep, family time, and shared experiences is something that I did 20 years ago. I'm done with that. Right now, at the age of almost 45, I value sleep, family time, and shared experiences. As a couple, my husband and I chose for me to be the stay-at-home parent and support person for the family. This happened 20 years ago in 2003. Our boys are adults now. They are 20 and 18 years old. In summary, I am a very supportive wife and the primary caregiver for our two now-adult sons, by choice. We chose this as a couple. Even though it was a choice, I did resist the role at first because my income was almost double that of my husband's. However, after having one baby in 2003 and knowing that we wanted another, who ended up coming in 2005, we made some sacrifices, and I became the full-time mom, part-time pharmacist. Also, we knew that pharmacists generally have glass ceilings, and engineers do not. If you're new to the show, I have talked about my husband before. My husband is a mechanical engineer by training. We took a gamble in 2003, 20 years ago. We took a gamble that someday he would far out-earn me. Fast forward 20 years, it was a good gamble. He out-earns what I would make right now as a full-time pharmacist. I'm not trying to take any credit for my husband's career. However, it needs to be said that supporting your spouse from the home front can pay off. Many families struggle deciding who will be the stay-at-home parent if a stay-at-home parent is needed. I feel that struggle. I lived it. Now, 20 years ago, we chose to live off of one income, eliminate all of our debt, and achieve financial freedom. That financial freedom eventually made it possible for me to be an entrepreneur. These things don't happen overnight. And yes, this does sound like a good story for your financial pharmacist podcast. I'm way ahead of you. You can check out my conversation with Tim Ulbrich on episode 279 of Your Financial Pharmacist podcast. 
There's a link to that in the show notes, which you can find on thepharmacistvoice.com. Click on the podcast tab and search for episode 213. Apart from the financial aspect of entrepreneurship, I am very aware that I have now spent more than 22 years building my reputation as a pharmacist and as a responsible person. It would take about one minute to destroy that reputation. As soon as I would call off because my son's caregiver doesn't show up or because the school cancels due to a snow day, which happens here in Ohio, the light bulb would go off in my employer's head and they would think, oh, I can't trust her to show up. I can't trust her to show up. The sad part is that they wouldn't be wrong. Listen, I care about my reputation, and I worked hard to earn it. Therefore, I went the entrepreneur route, and I ended up loving what I do. In summary, I left clinical practice because of childcare issues and my own set of values, health and family being my top two priorities and achieving financial freedom made it possible for me to be an entrepreneur. Let's get into how Craig inspired me to use my voice as a voice actor slash medical narrator and podcast host. As the story goes, I had just left my job at a behavioral health hospital in October of 2016. I was reading to Craig in his bed at night before bedtime, and I thought, oh man, my son loves it when I read to him. Maybe I could monetize my voice. Spoiler alert, I figured out how to do that. I do monetize my voice. Now, in the beginning, I wanted to narrate pharmacy continuing education journals into audio format. When I started, I had zero experience recording, editing, and producing audio files. It was a scary time. (laughs) I am not very tech savvy, and I had a lot to learn. And I knew it. I had a lot to learn, and I knew it. And learn I did, though. I am now a champ at recording, editing, and producing audio files. I still wouldn't call myself tech savvy, but I do have a kind of techie job, and I'm good at it. Now, unfortunately, my original service idea did not work out. I did not get paid to narrate pharmacy continuing education stuff into audio format. Fail. However, like all entrepreneurs who fail, I pivoted. Specifically, I pivoted right into the voiceover industry, which I didn't know even existed. And now I get paid to narrate a variety of content. It's fun and I love it. I also teach online courses and I do consulting work. None of this would have happened without both my son's appreciation for my voice and watching him struggle to communicate. I work part-time as a medical narrator and a podcast host. And I must say that my full-time job is actually being Craig's advocate. So not only do I monetize my voice, but I also use my voice as a full-time advocate for Craig. My husband and I make a great team, but I am Craig's strongest advocate. Helping a young man with autism navigate the world is a full-time job. Literally, it is my full-time job. I am now becoming a paid caregiver through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities so that I can earn money caring for my child because our County Board of Developmental Disabilities is unable to provide caregivers for him. We have a caregiver crisis here in Ohio. Now, as Craig's advocate, I look at the world differently to help him achieve his full potential. Craig has strengths, preferences, interests, and needs. My friend Michelle, who is, she, she's kind of like one of those people that we talked about, pain into purpose. She has an adult son with special needs, and she became a special education teacher. She calls these strengths, preferences, interests, and needs Craig's spins. S-P-I-N-S, spins. S is for strengths, P is for preferences, I is for interests, and N is for needs. Craig has strengths, preferences, interests, and needs. I have to look at the world through a lens layered with those four areas, and then some. Now, I don't talk about Craig's strengths enough, so I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to say some really nice things about my son, Craig. 
First of all, Craig has a great sense of humor and a good temperament, 95% of the time. We all have bad days, right? When Craig laughs, it is one of the few times that I get to hear his voice, and it is music to my ears. His laugh is music to my ears. Craig is strong and healthy. Among other things, he helps me carry my laundry around the house. We have a two-story house. Laundry's in the basement. It's a lot of work, and he helps me with that. Uh, Craig also communicates with his communication device. It's a lot like a smartphone or an iPad. Think of it however you want. If you look at the home screen, there are pictures. Now, with Craig's communication device, he touches a picture and it speaks a word. Just because the buttons are there, however, it doesn't mean that he knows how to use all of them. Craig likes being around people, especially my husband and our younger son, Derek. Craig likes adults more than kids, probably because of the noise. And as far as being around people that are outside of our family, Craig loves going to church, he loves grocery shopping at Kroger and Costco, and he loves going to local parks. Craig loves to ride stuff. Craig loves riding in vehicles and running errands, too. He loves all vehicles, especially his Grandpa Bob's four-wheeler. He's just a passenger, though. He does not drive. We don't even let him sit in the driver's seat. What vehicles has Craig experienced? Good question. First of all, Craig has been a passenger on two of my five motorcycles. He loves to ride. As he's gotten bigger, we've got a little weight distribution problem, though. He's a lot bigger than me. I'm worried about popping wheelies. Therefore, he does not ride with me anymore. But for a number of years, we had a very good time. If you're a motorcycle mama like me, you know how much fun it is to ride with your kids. Craig is also a frequent passenger and non-paddler on our tandem kayak. I have to be careful what kind of water we get into. It has to be pretty smooth. Speaking of boats, Craig has also been on a sailboat in the Pacific Ocean in the Seattle area. He loved it. Craig's also been on a helicopter ride from Las Vegas to the Grand Canyon. He's been on an Amtrak passenger train from Toledo to Chicago. He's ridden the L in Chicago, the subway in New York, the metro in D.C., a number of airplanes, and a number of taxis and Ubers. Craig loves to ride pretty much any plane, train, ship, or automobile. Craig's dream job is to ride in a UPS delivery truck and deliver packages. He needs a job coach to be successful, but you get the idea. He loves to ride, and he's good at delivering things. Craig is good at riding a bike and hiking. Not for long periods of time, but he is good at hiking and biking. And he can eat pepperoni pizza and drink Coke just like any other 20-year-old boy. Craig has strengths. He also has preferences, like, again, the not so much on the kids. And he has interests, like delivering things and riding in cars. But he also has needs. For brevity, I'll skip the details and summarize by saying that I know Craig really well, and I am his advocate. I help him get his needs met with his preferences and interests in mind. A little while ago, I said that helping a young man with autism navigate the world is a full-time job. That is a loaded statement, I'm sure you could tell, but it's also true, and it's the reason that I only work part-time in my business. I have a lot to coordinate for Craig, and it's truly a full-time job. If at some point down the line I have more support, I could take on additional roles with my own company. I could take on more work. For now, part-time is enough. What are all these things I have to coordinate? It, just in case you're interested, here's the short list. Craig's still in high school. I know he's 20, but he's allowed to stay in high school until he's 22. So. I'm in charge of attending meetings on his behalf, from his IEP, that's the Individualized Education Plan, to his behavior plan, to summer school, to planning which classrooms write for him next year, I'm very involved. I also have to work with programs outside of school. I would love to show off and name them all, but I can't remember them, so I'll just give you the short list. I work with the Social Security Administration to secure his Social Security income. 
I work with the local probate court as his legal guardian. I am his caregiver through the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. I work with the County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the County Board, not the state, the County Board of Developmental Disabilities, too, to get support in a number of areas. There are so many things they do. I appreciate them. One of the things we're working on most right now is his transition from school services to adult services. You don't just graduate high school and automatically go into just one single program. There's a lot to look into. Therefore, the county board is helping me with that transition from school age to adult services. And I also work with a variety of caregivers from respite facilities to independent caregivers to agencies. That's a lot, but that actually just skims the surface. The bottom line is that what I do is a lot like an iceberg, come to think of it. What you see above the surface of the water is only part of the story. It's only part of the story. At least 80% of what I do is invisible to the average person. And I still had the passion to start a business, and I still am a very supportive wife and caregiver for both of our sons. My life is wonderfully complicated. I hope this episode has given you the opportunity to get to know me better as a person, understand how my company started, and maybe inspire you to turn pain into purpose, too. When you think your back is against the wall, look around you. Something you take for granted, like your voice, might be the one thing that you can monetize while still using your background as a pharmacist. My name is Kim Newlove. I am the founder of The Pharmacist Voice LLC and the host of The Pharmacist Voice podcast. Thanks for joining me today to hear my story. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to read the show notes. In the show notes today, you'll find links to last year's Autism Awareness and Acceptance episode. That's episode 147 of The Pharmacist Voice podcast. A link to Your Financial Pharmacist podcast, episode 279, autism stats and facts on the Autism Speaks website, my social media links, and more. If you know someone who needs to hear this episode, please share it with them. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe to or follow the Pharmacist Voice podcast on your favorite podcast player and YouTube to get each new episode right when it comes out. I'll be back next Friday, April 28th with my recap of the Ohio Pharmacists Association annual meeting and five brief interviews with some fantastic Ohio pharmacists. Thanks for listening today. I'll talk to you next week. What I'm about to share is for parents of children with autism who may have stumbled upon this, or maybe you're a pharmacist who has a child with autism. Check this out. Now, I wasn't sure how to stick my pearls of wisdom into the main part of this podcast episode because I know my audience. They are pharmacists, pharmacy students, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy professors, pharmacy owners, and medical narrators. And I know what they want. They want to hear about pharmacy stuff, voice actor stuff, podcaster stuff, or career transition stuff when they tune in. They may not want to hear what I'm about to talk about. But I also know that SEO will drive special needs parents to this episode. So without further ado, here are eight pearls of wisdom for parents of children with autism, especially young children. Number one, invisible disabilities baffle the general public. If you go to Disney, this is advice about Disney, take advantage of the special passes and opportunities that they offer for people with special needs. Your trip to Disney may be the only one that you have the time, the money, or the patience for. I went. I used the disability passes. People gave us hateful looks because we jumped the lines, and they said nasty things to us on our way to the front of the line. If this happens to you, ignore them. Their children get to grow up, graduate high school, maybe go to college, have careers, get married, have families— leave the house someday, and have a normal life without the challenges that we face. We get to go to the front of the line at Disney for one day. Ignore the haters and have the time of your life. Number two, what does a diagnosis get you? Some people do not want a diagnosis. That is your choice. 
but a diagnosis got my son access to treatment, resources, accommodations, funding, and a community of people who understand us and what we're going through. Raising a child with special needs brings on more challenges than I can explain. I recommend you get the diagnosis, take the help, join the community. Number three, find people you trust and listen to them. Vet your people, but don't try to do everything yourself. You can't go back to school to become a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, a speech therapist, a special ed teacher, what am I missing, a social worker, and so on. Find people you trust and listen to them. Let them help you and don't do it all alone. But don't assume that everyone will do everything for you. Hold yourself accountable for your part. Number four, being on Medicaid is not a mark of shame. When my son got his diagnosis of autism at the age of two and a half, I applied for a Medicaid waiver. Autism is an extremely expensive disability. I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to get him help over the past 18 years. It took more than 13 years to get Craig on Medicaid. When he finally got enrolled, it was just in time to help with tens of thousands of dollars of medical bills associated with the surgical extraction of his wisdom teeth under sedation. It was a big deal. It can take a while to get coverage. Apply early. And yes, hey, I am one of those people who drives a brand new car, has a cell phone, and has a child on Medicaid. He has a disability. Don't judge me. I used to judge people like me who came through my pharmacy drive through with a new car, a cell phone, and a Medicaid card. Walk a mile in my shoes, and you will no longer judge. Number five, succession planning is morbid, but it is necessary. I have been planning for my own death since February of 2008. My son was five. He is now 20. We planned early, and we revisit our plan often. God forbid something happens to me and or my husband. We have a plan. About five years ago, my friend, I'm going to call her Susan, died from breast cancer. Her daughter, who I'll call Allison, has autism and was 17. Her husband, let's call him John, died unexpectedly four months later. They accidentally orphaned their daughter, their adopted daughter, who has autism. At 17, Allison, the daughter, had to live in a respite facility until other arrangements could be made. 17-year-old Allison had zero blood relatives living here in the United States who could step up and take care of her on day one. Don't let that happen to your family. Susan and John were so smart. They were smart parents, very involved, but the worst-case scenario happened to them, and there was no plan, no clear plan. Number six. This is not a happy topic either, but here we go. Discrimination sucks. Usually, we hear about racial discrimination, black versus white, or age discrimination, old versus young, things like that. My son belongs to the ability community. It seems like everyone discriminates against us. Know your child's rights and fight for them. Moving on to number seven. Person-first labels and identity-first labels are a thing. I think we can all agree that some people are easily offended. There's a camp of people who prefer the person-first labels, such as, I have a son with autism. He's a person first. There's another camp of people who prefer identity-first labels. They say, I have an autistic son. Some people are really, really sensitive about labels. It's okay to be sensitive. Just please know that there are two camps and know that the person-first language is always the safest. After all, our children are people first. I have a son with autism. And last but not least, number eight, think ability first. I love those three words. Think ability first. For yourself and for your child with autism, think about what they can do instead of focusing on what they can't. For example, 
My son can't speak yet, but he uses a communication device really well. Whether you're helping your child, looking for a job, or trying to make changes in your diet, think ability first. Focus on what you can do. Be creative, and it will change your life. This ends the bonus round of the podcast. Even if you don't have a special needs child, I am sure that you have learned something. Thanks for listening.